It's just a public service announcement. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Ho. Oh, oh, H to the O V. I used to move snow. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? We got another great episode of Pro Sports Takes today. Where we make our takes on the future of sports. All right, we're back once again. Shit, I don't even know what episode we're on because we've just been on the daily grind. But the last two episodes have been about basketball. And you need to check them out because we can't contain our excitement about the NBA and what they have to offer. But baseball's back too. And we only have 60 games into the playoffs. So we decided to attack teams that could most likely be an MLB dynasty of the 2020s. And I probably haven't told you this, Rob, but I got this newfound fandom for the Chicago White Sox. They have my favorite player in the MLB and Tim Anderson, who plays with a swag and an energy that's mainly only seen on the basketball court or even the football field. But he could truly back it up on the field. This is a team with a stacked farm system, but we're talking about multiple championships in the next 10 years. And I'm not crazy confident in the Cubs' little brother can get that job done. Baseball is a tough sport to make these predictions about because the playing field isn't the same when it comes to free agents and contracts, but every team has the ability to draft well and develop prospects. And I think baseball needs one of the small market teams like the Royals of recent, but I'm going to go with the Atlanta Braves. The Braves boast a wild core of Freddie Freeman, Ozzie Albies, Ronald Acuna, and Austin Riley, and even other up-and-coming prospects that can hit the cover off the baseball. There's no secret that this team likes to mash and thrives off the bats of the big-time players. But the weakness of this team can become the pitching staff, like Mike fulton who has disappointed since his all-star season. But what they do have is ace Mike Soraka and a group of quality caliber starters in the 2020 season, such as Bryce Wilson, Kyle Muller, De La Cruz, and more. I dive deep into those players, but what y'all should do is monitor the Braves' future outlook and you'll understand the depth and potential this team boasts in the 2020s. But I'm just a true fan of what the Braves have to offer. I'm definitely a fan of the chop with teams like the Indians, Chiefs, Florida State, and all that. So the home field advantage is huge. And the only Native American team that hasn't been able to really drive that much influence is the Washington football team. But before I get off track, this team is a dominant home team as they led the NL in wins last year at home with the 50-31 and record in Truist Park. Uh, good enough to be second in the entire league behind the Bronx Bombers and the New York Yankees. But for all those reasons, I think the Braves can continue to build on their back-to-back NL East titles. And unfortunately, they're in a vision with Soto and the Nats that just won the World Series last year. The potential A-Rod, J-Load, and Syndergaard, New York Mets. And who knows what the Phillies can bring together or build around Bryce Harper. But none of them would top Atlanta because this franchise is hungry to get back to the success that they haven't had since they won a championship in 1995. Yeah, the Braves, Padres, White Sox, they're all great sleeper picks here with stacked farm systems. And maybe we'll make some take another time about them in the future. But when you think about teams being capable of not winning just one championship, but putting together multiple seasons of championship success, which is kind of what we're talking about, It's typically a team who is a prominent organization like a Boston Red Sox or New York Yankees or Giants or Dodgers. And the big market factor that so evidently affects prolonged success along with other key factors like having a talented roster or high-level management team, young assets, and already proven playoff experience, it seems to me that the Los Angeles Dodgers are the clear-cut choice here when you take those into account. While I do respect your take about the Braves, that's that's a team that hasn't won a playoff series in almost two decades when Chipper Jones and Greg Maddox were their best players. So to me, there's really only two teams that I'd be willing to bet the house on that they'll win at least one championship this decade. And that's the Dodgers and then the Yankees with their renaissance of the murderer's row in their lineup. The thing about the Yankees, though, is even with Garrett Cole, they still don't have the pitching in place that inspires as much faith as people should have in the Dodgers who have three franchise pillars in Cody Bellinger, Mookie Betts, and Walker Buehler who all look like perennial MVP and Cy Young candidates for at least the next five years. Plus you got extremely promising young talent like Gavin Lux, Dustin May, Julio Urias, and Corey Seager that could really all help collectively bring LA their first title since 1981, back when Fernando Mania was going wild. It's a new era in the City of Angels, and while the Dodgers proved to be one of the most successful teams of the 2010s, 
they failed to come through with that elusive World Series title and even witnessed their arch rival in the Bay capture three titles in the decade's first five years. So they may or may not match that success of three rings over the next decade, but I'd have no problem betting on the Dodgers to win three ships this decade before I'd bet against them winning a single championship over the next 10 years. When you have three of the top 10 franchise cornerstones in the entire league all on the same team, combined with being the number one free agent destination with their type of big market and location going forward, along with a deeply talented roster in place, it's not a matter of if the Dodgers win a World Series in the 2020s. It's a matter of how many will they win. Yeah, the Braves haven't won a series since the 90s, and that's why I think they're due. I know I said drafting can overcome payrolls, which it can, but the Dodgers are quite an outlier. They're the number two in payroll in the league, and I really don't like the MLB's payroll system. It's different from the NBA. It's different from the NFL. They're the only one that allows bigger market teams to just completely shit on smaller market teams by millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, no salary cap. No salary cap. So the Dodgers are number two. The Braves are somewhere in the middle pack around 15, 16, and I just feel like that's an unfair advantage. But let's look at the top four teams in that paper. It's the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Red Sox, and the Astros. All those teams have had immediate success over the past, but the Dodgers continually disappoint year after year. And maybe they can win a World Series this year because of this corona bullshit. But in a full season, they have just haven't gotten the job done. And maybe that's led by Clayton Kershaw. Maybe that's the reason why they can win multiple championships in the 20s, which is a huge possibility. And they have a great core. They, they're doing everything right. So I like your pick, but, you know, I got to go to back for my Atlanta Braves. Hey, as far as I know, those Corona pennants go up right next to the ones that they've won in the past. So sounds like we're both taking teams that haven't won a single championship in the 21st century, but we both believe they will be crowned champions in this upcoming decade. Exactly. I mean, like you said, it doesn't matter if it's this year, the pennant still stays up in the stands. Even if you cheat like the Astros in the past, the pennant still stays in the stands. So hopefully one of these teams can win championships and multiple ones of them in the 20s and They'll probably be dynasties if our predictions are correct. Man, bringing up the Astros, the Washington football team, this episode is full of controversy, but <laughs> lock it in. That's our take for the day. And you can find all pro sports takes on prosportsoutlook.com or even better if you're already subscribed to Pro Sports Outlook's YouTube channel. And that wraps up this episode of Pro Sports Takes. And remember, we encourage everyone to go ahead and leave comments about the player or even the team you want us to discuss. Tweet us at PSO underscore sports. Or simply use the hashtag Pro Sports Takes. And we'll continue to monitor what's hot so we can give it a spot on our future show. Thank you all for listening. We'll see you next week.